So hi everyone, good uh, good afternoon. It's good to be here actually. So I think that over time I found out that a lot of times when designers talk about art and design, there's the feeling of okay, we have to we have to focus on uh, design. We have to pick this one. One comes after the other. Uh, whatever the uh, issue is, it always seems like there's a duel that is about to happen or that is, in, that is impending. Whenever there's anything that, is, um, that comes up about art and design. So there is the, oh no, art is only about aesthetics, blah, blah, blah everything. Design is uh, a pro problem solving, uh, what do you call it now? A problem solving um, endeavor, whatever you want to call it. So it's easy for you to start to say, oh, you know what, I'm on this side. I think you should have this. I think you should have that and all that. So what we are really looking at, and I think what we should do is to go through times. So I would like um, Bolaji to please help me go to the next slide, the third slide, I think. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I should just give you a little background about myself. So uh, in 2009, I studied, I started to study fine arts. And then while I was studying or before I started studying, actually, I had, um, I'd learned a little bit of design, but then you know how all those laptops were then. So you can already imagine that it was all those Pentium, whatever. And then the laptop would definitely be, be slow. You just have to contend and use whatever you have. And then I had some very nice um, friends that would just borrow me their laptop and do one or two things. But then I was still designing little by little and all of that. Then uh, I came back into school to learn, to continue my journey in art. So basically, all through the time that I was studying art, I was designing. When I got to part two, I think that was when I got very serious and started reading a lot about design. And then I started to see how it's very, very, uh, it's very easy to start to pull, um, to start to pull thoughts, especially when you study art, because you start to look at the things that you are taught in class and you see it appearing in design over and over again. So it becomes, uh, and then I started to see that there were a lot of things that I could um, employ in design that I was learning in art. So it was really a beautiful journey because I could see those things come alive and I could see how people could interact with this thing. So in art, sometimes you, you get to see uh, people come with different interpretation to one thing that you paint. So I, I, um, I majored in painting, by the way. And then it was fun. When you paint, someone can come in and say, I see a hand behind this thing or whatever. However, when it comes to design, it's not so. Here you get so. Uh, BJ, please, can you go to the next slide after this? Yeah. So part of the things that I learned in school was about prehistory. And it was interesting to know that people started creating things because they needed things to work. So from sharpening rocks, cutting rocks, to make stuff, to whether cut leather, to make things, the idea was that they needed something to be done and they had the tools to do them. So they had to cut stone, break rocks, fight with those stones, and make things. The idea really was that they had to do things. They had to get some stuff done. They had to protect themselves. To the next slide. Okay, next slide. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're studying, when you're studying a course like I did, one of the first things that they show you is this famous, famous um, Lascaux cave in France, and it's interesting that these guys just started to create stuff. This this was um, for for mostly spiritual purposes. So they would put these things there to say, okay, we are warding off animals like this. So they see a bison, they see a deer, they see whatever, whatever they might think is dangerous. They 
see it and they be like, we want to be protected from this thing. We cover up ourselves with whatever, whatever. We do whatever sacrifices we had to do and all of that. Then to the next slide. So I want to take you back in time. I remember when you were young. Look at this picture. It probably reminds you of when you would form things using whatever you found around, found objects, you started creating stuff. There was just really no, um, there was no boundary. There was nothing that you couldn't create. You just felt like you were invincible, right? You just really felt like, hey, I want to make, I want to make a car. You start to create it. I want to do this. I remember, uh, was it uh, Emmanuel? I was reading on his status where he said he created some things when he was young and all of that. And then I've even seen a particular video somewhere where this guy made a, uh, what do you call it now? This respiratory device and all of that. The idea is that when we were way younger, there was the mindset that we had, which was that I want to do something. I feel like doing it. Nothing stops me. I just need to pick one or two things and get it done. Yeah, we, we basically could create almost anything we wanted. We did. So it felt like nothing could stop us. But as, but as we grew older, can you go to the next slide? So as we grew older, we got to see uniforms and then assignment. So let me tell you an interesting thing about the last slide and this slide. When you were young and you could create whatever you liked, there was a lot of art in that. Do you understand? And then when you got to school and you had to wear a particular uniform, mm -hmm. that is to explain design, intentional things being created. Do you understand? So it's more like, as a kid, you already had to be in between the world of art and design already without, without imagining that that was what you were doing. Yeah. So some of us grew up, not, a, not everybody actually, but some people grew up getting to hear their parents say things like, hey, stop playing with that kind of thing. You can't do that. Art is not chemical. Mm -hmm. uh, design is... Where, uh, be, oh, sorry, did I say design? Doctor, Doctor Lumadi. <laughs> Doctor, engineer, lawyer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then if you, are, if you are a female, they will say nurse, right? Yeah. So it was yeah. that those things, as simple as they were, they were the things that defined, that started defining us, one. Also, it started introducing us to what art is like and what design is like. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So there's the interesting thing when it comes to defining art. And a lot of people start by saying, hey, when you are, when you are defining art, I mean, art is about being reckless, being so free. You are free with everything. You, just, you can just splash. You can just splash something. And that is all. You can carry shit, put it on one canvas, and it sells anyway. I've heard of a case where uh, someone brought in urine for his exhibition and said that is what he's exhibiting, right? There is the crazy side of art or contemporary art that has made a lot of people to misunderstand what art really is. So there's the idea of art being an expression, right? Or being freedom to express whatever. And then Interestingly, when I got to school, one of the things that I saw was that it's not really just splash whatever, do whatever. It was a thing of, guys, there are, there are some things that should guide what you're doing. But then there is the side of it, which is focused on idea, the process, and the product. So you can pick art and say, art is about idea or ideation and you would not be wrong you can have a thought and you can call the thought an artistic thought you can have a process the process bringing that artistic thought to life and have it and still call that process art 
so for instance let's 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 bring in something that is not like what i did in school like say music you can you can have a thought of a song in your mind right that thought itself still art when you start to open your mouth singing process of singing is still art then say you release the song of sound out or wherever it is still art mm -hmm. so the idea is that we have different things of expression right there's the literary art performance art there are so many parts that has to be art and the interesting thing is that design actually falls under art so what do i mean on art again like i said there is performing art, there is literal art, there is visual art, under which the industrial design, which a lot of us know now as graphic design and all of that. So now, under literary arts, you can have things like poetry, whatever, performance art, you can have, uh, what do you call it now, uh, drama, whatever. But the idea is that across the board, we are looking at the ass, being birthed, you're, you're seeing the process and you're seeing the product. So, of course, we can say that from ideation to the finished product, we can call it art. Uh, let me, so it's more like this, right? The process is like where the rubber meets the road. So, if mm. you have an idea and it doesn't come out or you don't process it, it is still artistic, right? But then we may not be able to relate with it until we see the process at least and then get to make the product. So let's, let's see. So, so, so more, more like during the process, it may not make so much sense to the audience yet. But um, by the time it's done, we can all see the beauty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So Interesting. on the next slide, in the history of Nigeria, because I'm sure we're but speaking with, I'm speaking with a lot of Nigerians, right? We have okay. a lot of, uh, a lot of, oh, okay. Uh, someone is asking if you can zoom out to fit the screen or something. If we can what? Zoom out to, <laughs> to fit the screen. Okay, right? Is the person so doing what? a mobile device? Um, what we have here already okay. okay. Are you okay. doing a mobile device? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we're looking at stuff as simple as how our history was like. So this, this particular sculpture is from Owo. Interestingly, uh, Tunji is from Owo, a prince of Owo, right? This, this, uh, this beautiful artifact, most of the times were created not just for beauty, but to record things that were happening and for spiritual purposes. At the beginning, at the beginning of times, or when or we could have any record, these things were happening, right? But people did not put words to it. I remember having a conversation uh, with some guys on the team a long time ago. I was talking about evolution of art and how that most times that a lot of things were being created people did not necessarily, they didn't necessarily say, this is an art piece. They would just create things that they needed. And then over time, we look back at them, like, wow, what, a, what an amazing creation. What a beautiful. And then the next thing is that we call it art, right? But those things were very, very useful. So let's go to the next slide. A lot, a lot of people might not know all this thing on this slide you will look the interesting thing about this array baby is that it was for spiritual purposes these things were created because they saw that there was there was the question of people of uh and then they would be like okay let's create this thing to hold to hold the hand of death of our we would see that we would see that if 
this point. Uh, we can't hear you so well. Um, can you maybe oh. uh, and I'm uh, I'm as close as I was. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's better now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it is all right. Cool. Yeah. So you'd see stuff like this being created to to perform some certain uh, um, functions, <laughs> and th there's always this question about uh, design. Let's go to the next slide. Let me quickly show us something. So there's this thing about design that we often talk about, which is the fact that it is results driven. It is, uh, I, 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 there was a point that I started to define design as uh, arranging things or creating stuff to function in a particular way. So I want you to think about, to look at your room right now and imagine that a kid is coming into that room. What would you do differently? What would you rearrange? What would you move, right? In everything, what you're trying to do in the real sense is to make the place suitable for the kid that is coming in, right? Yeah. Now, as you're, you're trying to do that, you are, mm -hmm. there's a goal. The goal is that I can't have wires hanging around before the kid put, puts his hand inside, uh, what do you call it, electricity, and whatever happens, happens, right? You are thinking about pro uh, protecting the kid. Now, if it, were, if it were a day that is coming, there is the way that you would rearrange your room that is not exactly like the same way you would rearrange if it was a kid coming into that room, right? I don't know if, if you guys are following. Are you following? Yeah, 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 we're following. Okay. okay. Okay, someone is saying maybe you should not. I don't know. But the idea is really that you start to look at design. You get to see that it's almost, when you really, really look at it, you get to see that it's almost as if you are looking at something that feels like art also. You are looking at, yes, there is the goal. You want to create something that works. Whatever you're creating, UI design, the UX, the whatever, you're trying to make sure that something works, something gives you a final result, right? No matter how you look at it, no matter how you look at it, there's still the process and the results that you're going, that, 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 that you're going to create or that you're moving towards, right? Most times, right, we're always looking at trying to define art as separate from design, whereas maybe if we look at it from the sense of what we are, what we are complaining about or what we are arguing about, maybe if we look at it from the sense of what the future really is like, we will stop trying to drive a wedge between the two fields. So I want us to go to the next slide. So when it comes to design, we have clear-cut uh, processes, no different from each other, but the idea is that, say you're trying to create an identity for a brand, there's the way you go at it, even if it's different from another person's process, mm -hmm. the idea is that there is the solution that you're trying to procure to your clients, you're trying to, to uh, sell an idea to your client eventually, by the way. Again, I'm deliberately um, pulling in some words for, for us to not look at art just as, just aesthetics. Because eventually, you find, I, I think it's interesting that I, I, was, um, I was writing something about this same topic, right? And it's interesting that we think that art is lawless, design has a lot of principles, Meanwhile, art doesn't. And then we, we start thinking that, uh, well, you can do anything and it passes. But then, have you ever asked yourself, when people come together to judge art, what, how, do they judge, how do they judge one art as better or whatever? So I remember when I was in school, right, there was a particular time that I, I just felt like it was pure injustice to judge art the way 
it was being judged because if you judge okay so i had some crazy lecturers by the way it was funny that i had a lecturer that would say uh that would say uh you say this one is uh, 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 i like this color yellow and because of that bah, four. i like this color blue i don't like this color brown because of that that's too low man, and then i had other lecturers that were better actually that would look at your progress and judge based on that i felt like that was the best way to judge any art piece by the way that you are, you are looking at the, the artist and you are saying, okay, this was what this person did before now, and this is what this person has done now. So we can see that this person is progressing. So you are judging based on the journey. But when people go for competitions, have you thought about it, that how do they judge the work as better? By the way, how many people saw this? Uh, there was this post that someone made, and made the coat of arms, and said, Aki Alabi should come and buy. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw it. It was crazy, right? Yeah, the Akinola Samuel is saying <laughs> poor finishing. So what really happens is that when it comes to, should I call it tenements or something, there are some things that actually guide how we can judge things mm -hmm. to be beautiful. And true artists will be able to say that this thing is not beautiful. I, by true artists, I mean people that are actually practicing and that are not um, biased based on sentiments, right? They look at something, they can tell. They can, we can see how much work you put into this thing. And that is really the case, of, the case for art. Mm -hmm. And it is the same with design, weirdly. But most times, again, we, st we start to... Um, I I'm going to try to not do much of differentiation but then i will get to a point where i would explain some things that a lot of us that a lot of people use to judge art or design and talk about as different because there was a time that i went online to look at what people are really um, saying about these different things what people are defining as oh yeah this is art this is design so basically right we're looking at again we're looking at process the same attitude that you can have as an artist you can have it as a designer you can be like the person that we, that uh Akiola Samuel talked about where there the, the was very poor finishing you can be that same kind of design even if you studied fine art the idea is that your eye for aesthetics matters in whatever field you're you're, you're going into so in art we were thought that that means ojo or no eye for aesthetics and over time it is built really and i feel like um, victor will talk a lot more about that later in the evening but i might delve into it just a little bit later in um, this session so i want us to look at the next slide so i think it's interesting this this project was was done by paula shah one of my heroes, right? And she created the, uh, the Windows identity based on the principle of, uh, of perspective. Would you believe that she actually wasn't the one that created all these other uh, sub-brands or these other logos and expressions? So I remember watching her and part of what she said was that when she was creating this identity, it was based on the, the, the principle of perspective. And she felt like in, in approaching any identity, in a, okay, sorry, one minute. Yeah, in approaching any identity, right, you have to have a particular principle. Sure, you get, you have a particular principle that you focus on and let it cascade into the whole brand or make it easy, create a principle that is easy to cascade into the whole brand. So by the time she was done with this identity, she hands off actually, and then their designers started to create these other things, started to create the other expressions. Felt like, okay, I think it's time for us to rebrand Microsoft Word. You can see what Microsoft Word looks like. 
you can see uh let me see the other one that you would know there's excel there's uh sharepoint powerpoint but everything if you look at it cl uh, closely everything is based on a particular principle so when it comes to uh creating or working on uh, designs particularly mm -hmm. we have the principles we have the elements to contend with to, in creating whatever we want to create and let's go to the next slide so this particular place here i i think i like it a lot because most times there's always the argument for whether whether i'm more artistic or i'm more of a designer or okay art is really uh freedom then design is streamlined this one and that one but again like i have here you can actually decide to say you know what i'm living for the argument this is what this means this is the word this is the dictionary meaning this is this this is that blah blah you can choose to be like that or you can actually look for the way to make it really work so but then like i said i would like to quickly go through those things that we say or that are found that people use to differentiate art because i think it uh, art and design i think it's important that we quickly brush through mm -hmm. them okay okay all right so the first thing that people say is that art would ask you questions then then design then design will just will really solve problems Okay, yeah. So, Temilolu uh, Adedeji. At at the beginning, one of the things that I said is that art is like how do I explain? Art is like your room right there. Then design is like a piece of furniture in that room. Do you understand? Design is a thing under art. So you are not wrong for what you said. Do you understand? Okay. So back to this thought. That art will ask you questions. Design solves problems. So, from that thought, the first thing that people say is that, okay, guys, art is always posing questions that it cannot answer. But guys, have you have you noticed? I don't know if you've come towards Aja if you're living in Lagos. There was a time that there was this there was this fish um, sculpture somewhere, and you would see that okay, there was a time in Lagos that th there were a lot of crimes and everything and everywhere was really way dirty dirty than it is now i'm not saying it's extremely clean but it's better right one of the things that the government i'm sure did was that they sat down they saw a problem right and to solve the problem they felt like you know what let's let's employ all these uh, uh, artists and let's see them march across the whole city Let's see them create stuff. Let's see them beautify this place. So there's the idea that yeah, art can really ask you questions, and can answer those questions in the same breath. So art would say things like, "How can I make this? Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to create something. How can I make it better? How can I make it more beautiful?" In the same breath. In art, you're already thinking of ways to make it work. So you're not just really asking questions. As much as art would ask the question, it will answer the question, right? And let's say you you find out in the process of designing that as you are asking questions, you are getting answers that beg more questions. And it's the same for most things. It's just like uh, uh, knowing that. It's just really life. You get you get to answer some questions. You it leads you the solution leads you to other questions. So beyond it being just art and design, right? You are looking at the fact that it is just really a phenomenon in life. Asking a question, answering it is just part of life. So there is the side that says, "Oh yeah, art would inspire you, but design will make you will make your life better in ways that you won't even notice." Or art is so obvious design is not as obvious let's not lie design is obvious whether you like it or not 
you can say that I'm coming to a place, right? You can say that how it works should be so seamless that you can be dumb and you still get it. But it is what it is. You will still notice that because how you, how you know that you notice these things is that when when a particular service when it messes you up, even if it's it's been good, you would know that this thing is not is not really this this thing is not working as it should work, right? So yeah, I agree with the fact that. The, in, in, in terms of design, it can get so unnoticeable. But then, I, I think I think let me just pick it one by one so that we don't rush things up, right? So let's say we say art would inspire you. I'm sure we will all agree about that. Uh, the yellow album came out some some days ago, or last week, right? And everybody has been all over it. There is the way that inspires us while we're doing our work. You just want to listen to Brimo or you want to listen to whoever. And that music really affects you, right? And you know what? I, I think you would be shocked to know that a long time ago, actually in Egypt, right, there were the things that they used to call the color healing process, right? What they did with those things were simple. You had a particular sickness, you had a particular pain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's a particular color that will work for you. Say you have a dick and they find out that blue is the color. There's the part of the temple that has that blue colored light. So they will bring you into that room and make you probably rest inside. And when you're done, you'll be fine. So yes, there is the there is the side of art that will inspire you to do stuff. I mean, you go for a concert, you feel like yes, I'm on top of the world. In the same way, there is you noticing that some things have gotten better or whatever it has affected me, has affected my mind. So wherever, however, we want to look at it, there is the fact that. You can notice or notice when it comes to art and design. So when it comes to uh, okay, there is there is the thing about design. When people say things like oh you don't notice blah blah and everything, have you uh, have you gone through? Uh, there was a time that we were working on a particular um, campaign, political campaign, and um, we had to go through the things that Barack Obama did for his campaign. And it's weird that they did so much work to make sure that you notice them. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea. That's the idea for, uh, what do you call it? That's the idea for advertising and advertisement. Things, that, things pop up in your face. You're browsing and then Jumia pops up in your face. The idea is that you should notice us. Do you understand? Yes, we know that you can design door handles that would just really work without stressing you out. Yes, we know that uh, you can have, for instance, you can have music in the background, and it's not really saying anything. It's just probably instrumentals, and you, you can't even notice it. You just know that it's so calm, and it's, it's helping your life and destiny, <laughs> right? It's helping you focus, but you almost don't notice you can have, uh, you, you, can't, you can't really argue the fact that things design, when it comes to design, you are making it so that it will be noticed. Yeah, you want to use it. If you don't use it, uh, if you don't notice some things, how will you use it well? So there's, that, there's always that argument. I feel like it's, it's uh, all these arguments are like two-sided. Right. Uh, for instance, this Milton Gla uh, Glasser was talking about uh, this when he designed this "I Love New York" thing, and it inspires patriotism. Right. Look at when you hear the national anthem, wherever. I know you are angry about stuff in Nigeria right now, right? But there's the feeling that you just feel that pride from somewhere. I don't know. 
it just happens. I don't know if it if it uh, makes you angry. I wanted to say if it angers you. <laughs> but but look at it like this, right? When it comes to okay, I went to OAU like I said at the beginning, and there's a way that it affects you. When I was <laughs> when I was getting married, they started singing the greatest song, and it was crazy. Everybody went. Everybody that was from OAU started to shout and everything. The idea is that when it comes to things that are being created, they can delight you. Whether it is art, whether it is design, it can delight you. It can inspire you. And each side of the coin, if, if, you, if you put art and design as a uh, uh, coin, each part can inspire you without you noticing, can, can uh, make your life better while you notice it. Do you understand? So, uh, then the next thing that a lot of people would say is that, oh yeah, art does not have any rule. Or it doesn't have replicable process. And so, well, uh, so you can't, you can't create art and create it again. You can't, you can't get it the same way and all of that. Then, but well, design has rules and has uh, principles. And even if the result is ugly, you know that there is an understanding that brought you to where you, 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 you are or brought you to that goal. So this, this uh, is partly true, it's not fully true. So this is what I mean. When, when you say things like art doesn't have rules, I think it's unfair. I think so. So because I know a little bit about music, I know a little bit about art. Let's just say it like that, you know. But the idea is this, right? When you look at, say, when you say things like art does not have rules, have you ever, ever thought about, I don't know if you know Pablo Picasso, I don't know if you know, uh, what do you call it now, Michelangelo Bonarotti, you would know these guys because they really had a lot of masterpieces, right? So uh, Pablo Picasso is like the, is not like, is the godfather of, um, cubism and the strange thing is that he uses this same style over and over again in different ways so we cannot really say that there's no replicable process nah, or that there's no rule I think it's funny I think uh, a lot of oh yeah I, I like what he is saying that there is nothing that doesn't have rules to it uh, I, I think when I get to the end, I, I wanted to leave this for the end, but I should say it right now. When you are dealing with uh, thoughts like uh, trying to separate art and design, I think you have to look at it from the humans that relate, that relate to these things and look at it that it's really, uh, it's really part of life when you think about it. For instance, there's the way that you've arranged your house currently. And whether you like it or not, it's design. You get. And there are rules. Even if, even if the rules were born from your desires from when you were young. For instance, let's say you always, tell, you, you always told yourself that, see, I'm going to have a very big veranda in my house. Uh, uh, or I'm going to have a long mirror in my sitting room. I'm going mm -hmm. to have these things. They are still your guidelines, whether you like it or not. But then, let's just get back into this, right? Uh, so, back to art having no rules. So, when it, for instance, when you look at music, right? Uh, imagine what reggae sounds like right now. They are the things that make reggae really replicable. They are the beats, the harmonies, the, the, the rhythm of the, the percussion instruments, right? Even if, uh, let's see, if Adekunle Gold decides to sing reggae today, reggae is reggae, and it's because there are rules. Now, I'm deliberately talking about art in the broader sense so that we won't just cage ourselves to just things like painting and sculpture, right? And again, yeah, cubism, among the other things, right? They are replicable, whether we like it or not. So some people start down honing those skills 
to make sure that they made a principle out of how they did their work. So back to back to this. Most times, right, I, I think what makes it hard for people to say, or what makes it easy for people to say things like there, there are no rules is because they think about it like this. An artist is probably sometimes unable to explain all the decisions that he made mm -hmm. to take him to a particular point. For instance, an artist might not be able to explain or is not pressured, I think that's the word, is not pressured to explain things like, oh yeah, so I felt like la and do would work together, or I felt like this blue color would just suit this purple, or whatever. And then I decided to put a splash of this green, and then I felt like lake green would work, then I moved to cockroach brown. Might not be able to sit down and start explaining. That is probably the role of, uh, what do you call it, that, that those people that we call art historians or people that write about art. The person that is creating it may not want to sit down and start doing that. Or might feel like it's a lot. How will you tell me to sit down and start explaining why I decided that it's cockroach brown over chocolate blue or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, right? It might be tough for you to start saying, oh, yeah, this was why I decided to put this note in this time frame. This is why I decided to do this. Because it might be distracting to him. Right? But then, I mean, and then, let's not, let's not lie, actually. I think another thing that makes it tough is that I, I lived in Ibadan almost all my life, guys. And it's funny. It's funny that, oh, oh, lol. I, I'm not saying that Adekunle will sing reggae. I'm just joking. It was just a thing. But the point is that because while I was in Ibadan, there was a particular day I was at Total Garden. I was in, I was in my father's car and we were going to a place. And a particular artist mm -hmm. came to our, to our window and started saying, forget about our painting. Honestly, I'm still very angry at what happened that day. Because the thing was looking so hideous and very ugly. And I felt like, I don't understand. What, what exactly is this jabajantis that this guy is trying to sell? No, it, it wasn't com contemporary art. Don't give me that. It wasn't. It was terrible. Terrible to behold. I will not lie. And then this guy wanted to sell it off and said eh, eh, 5K or something. I looked at the thing. I felt like my friend, right? But I think what was funny what was funny was that the guy started saying things like, Oh guy Joe can help me. Uh Ed Josa, Ed Joe man help me. Anything Tebani if he helped me. Bushy hundred naira, I was like, Oh god, call Kati Kati so my friend. Point is that there are some artists that create very ugly things. Do you get <laughs> there are some people that create stuff that are hideous and make people angry that what exactly is this trash? And it's because they are not, uh, like I, I said something at the beginning, I said something about true artists. It's, yeah, there is a lot of sentimentalism when it comes to art, but we must understand that there are also principles that guide art. I remember when I, when I first got into school, one of the first things that they taught us were the principles of art and design. They taught us straight up, like part one, we knew it from top to bottom, right? We knew the elements and all of that. But when it came to design, I started to see that the way we approach these principles and all of that, are more, um, they are more concrete and geared towards some set of, some set of goals, right, that, that are predetermined. For art, most times, the goals, the goals may be predetermined or not. There is no, there's no boundary for that, right? Back to uh, design having rules and all of that. So I, I was talking about Polasha's design the other time, and I was talking about it being based on a particular principle which is that uh, 
you look at creating stuff, you can create it with the principles. So let's see, let's see what else we can we can create with a part, uh, another principle. Let's see, uh, say poster design. You look at hierarchy. You look at uh, your use of color. Use that. You, you look at the several things that you have to put in place, right? Yes, we agree. When it comes to design, there is the ease of being able to explain processes. It's easier to explain the processes. Let's not lie. There are times where, when you say things like, uh, when, when you say things like, the the results may be ugly. Let's not lie. If there is the choice between an ugly thing and a beautiful thing that works. Again, I'm very, very particular about saying it. When there's a choice between a, an ugly thing and a beautiful thing, it's very likely that you go for the beautiful thing. Although when you get to some certain ages in life, you find out that I'm not yet there. No, I'm not. I'm still very, very young. When you get to some particular age, you find out that you probably prefer the ugly one. And it's mostly based on biases. So you you're thinking about you're thinking about stuff like I've gotten used to this thing. So this is the only way for me to live life. This is the only way for me to make this decision and all of that, right? It is a normal thing. Do you get? But like uh, Don Norman would say, you don't want to create things that are so beautiful but unusable. Do you get? But you you also don't want to create things that are ugly but usable. You don't want it to just be ugly like that. For instance, part of the reasons um, why you would pick, say, a, a, an Apple laptop over, for me, I, I think I would still pick an Apple laptop over Alienware for now. When, when I want things to get ugly, I'll pick an Alienware. But the fact is that there's this slickness that comes with some particular products and because of the beauty you just get attracted to it and like i said there, there's an age for that when it gets to some particular ages some people don't really care about beauty they just say things like i just want this thing i just want a car forget the beauty don't give me uh can you just give me whatever the thing is move me to where where i need to be right so i think that we are still looking at finding the sweet spot, right? Okay, let let's go to let's go to the next slide, Bolaji. Okay, this is just an illustration. Don't mind the illustration. I just cooked it up, and uh, I felt like it was cool anyway. So there's the part that is like weirdish and flows like that and feels like a bird. That's probably us trying to say this is art. Then there is the part that is a circle, a straight circle, and then there is the sweet blue spot, and that's really where we're where we're talking about. But before before we go, let's uh, let's look at one more thing that a lot of people talk about. So they say things like, okay, art is more dependent on the context in which it exists than design is. You know what? Let's not lie. All these things sound a lot theoretical. Do you get than practical? Until you are really faced I, I, I think that we take a lot of we uh take a lot of time trying to say, you know what, we want to differentiate and it stops us uh, like the time that you could have spent doing the argument and everything, could have spent it making great stuff, doing beautiful stuff, right? The, the truth is that, yes, a lot of lawlessness have been a, a ascribed to art and a lot of being uh, result-oriented or result-driven has, uh, has been ascribed to design. But in the real sense, it's just really, it's just really perspectives and it's just really the way some, some people have really painted it with terrible pictures. So, and I, I, I think let's go to the next slide. So, it's more like this, right? Whatever you're doing, 
whether they are tilting towards the art side or design, for now, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, tilt like this and all. But to be able to make things that will really mean something to people, whether you are designing stuff, whether you are designing processes or systems, like, okay, this is how I want this thing to work from here to here and all of that, or you are designing whatever, your appreciation, and I call it hallowed appreciation of things is very, very important. So you don't just look at stuff and just say, you know what, it's just trash or it's just, it's just, uh, I could have done it. I could have, but you know, there, there's this funny thing that happens with looking at stuff. By the way, I don't mean uh, very ugly things. I'm just saying that a general disposition to life Right, uh, and I'm not saying that I don't remember that I just I just yabbed a particular work that I saw, but it really was hideous. If I if I if I was opportunity to take a picture of that work, and you saw the work, you won't touch it with a ten foot pole. Says I'm sure, but the point is that, right? Yeah, I know I know that some things are trash. Oh yeah, yeah, and I agree that ugly can be relative. You know, I was saying something about I was saying something about uh, elderly people not minding things the way they are because they are just used to things. They see it's just understanding demographics and understanding the people that you're creating stuff for. So now I'm talking about design. Mm -hmm. Do you get when it comes to art? It's mostly expression. It's mostly expression. Right, and the artists have read so many biographies of people that created stuff, and they didn't get found out until years after their death. In fact, there, there, there are some shows that I would recommend for you to watch after this whole thing. I would recommend for you to watch. You could have Netflix, all you guys. You have Netflix now, so you can check up these shows. I will just list them out and. Um, yeah, just advice to watch them. But the idea is that some people don't get found out and they don't really care. They just want to make stuff. They don't care if it works for people or not. In fact, they don't really care. But then, when it comes to design, you are looking at this thing must mean something. It must mean something to people, to the people that I'm creating it for. And like I said, you cannot afford to have a mindset of anything works. I can I can just do anything I like. I, I just let me just you know, I, I just felt like that felt like can put you in trouble. It has done crazy stuff. Uh, well, I think that maybe <laughs> if if the if the uh what do you call it? If the repercussion is not so great, you can get away with it. But if you are working for multinationals, million dollar companies, it's very, very important. Every decision is method methodically made. So yeah, it's important that when when it comes to life, when it comes to your life, let's say as a designer or as a creator, you need to have a respectful view of things. You need to appreciate things for what they are. So something uh, something can get better, right? But there's something, there's a purpose that it's serving. There's probably something that you can learn from something. And I, I like to say something. I've been saying it for uh, a couple of times now. I keep saying it, and I love to say it, that if you are a, uh, a designer, you're a creator, please stop this nonsense that some people do, that they start sitting down and judging works that are ugly. This is what I mean. It's just the same way people talk about positive thinking and all of that. Let's not lie. If you keep talking trash about trashy designs and everything, you just see that your hand is doing rubbish or your mind is thinking it's nonsense, thinking in the rubbish, thinking in the nonsense, right? Point is that you need to uh, focus more, focus more on things that are beautiful and look at them in awe. That's like the disposition that you should have towards things. And that is really where the sweet spot is. 
the sweet spot is where you can bring a marriage. Let's go to the next uh, the next slide. I remember that I was having a conversation with someone some time ago, and I was saying that, see, when it comes to making stuff, there is there are methods, and there are there are uh, there is magic. There is a role for magic. So I think it's interesting that sometimes, we, especially designers or some creators, can get so stuck in principles, methods, processes that they don't allow room for magic to happen. And sometimes it is in the spot of. I can't, I, I'm sorry, I can't explain this one. I, I just know that it works. It's the spot that makes it work. I know it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous approach to, to stuff, but let's not lie. <laughs> it's dangerous because you, you must be, you must be, oh yeah, Balaji, thank you. You must, uh, how do I say it now? So there is, there is, there are methods and there's sometimes that stroke of just, I just knew that this color was going to work. I just knew that this shape was the right one. And I added it and it worked. Or deciding on stuff, I just feel that this is the way it should be. And people are reacting to it the way I thought they will react to it. And it's just probably just one stroke. But then, Sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with our processes, get overwhelmed with our methods that we don't even open ourselves up for the weird things to, the weird thoughts to flow in. Sometimes it's out of the weird thoughts that you rearrange and then you, you what do you call it now? You realign into the process. So of course there's the design thinking uh, uh, processes that have to do with converging and um, diverging and all of that. So there is a the time for you to be methodical. There is a the time for you to allow intuition to carry you, to flow and lead you to create magic. So yeah, let's, let's, let's go to, okay, someone is saying there is, okay, you know what, I'm, not ju I'm just not going to be reading too much of the content, yeah, of, of your chat for now. Okay, so, yeah, the process is the process, but then you need a spark of genius. So once in a while, you, you hear very um, established designers say stuff like, I just knew that this thing was going to work. I just knew that this was what I needed. I just knew that this, this is it, and it worked. And over time, it was just proven to be the best decision we've ever made. And I'm not just talking about designing identities. I'm even talking about designing processes, designing systems that make things work. Sometimes it's the crazy ideas that lead. Sometimes it's the crazy ideas. I mean, I remember a time that we were having a conversation at the office, and we're like, how, how did Balaji and Victor, how did they get to the point that they, they got to be like this? They got to be this open. And it was... What they said, they said, it really touched me. It said, they said, we decided at the beginning that this was what we were going to be like, and we knew that this was not part of the things that they write in rule books on how to handle your business. But this is what we are going to do, and we're going to do it in spite of what it feels like and all of that. For once in a while, actually, your sweet spot is beyond the process, and it is just a little bit outside, just a little bit outside the circle of the process. So let's go to uh, the next slide. This thing is tiny, but that white thing that you can see is Neri Oxman's uh, work on the silk pavilion. Uh, pavilion, sorry. So I, I think it's funny, but then I will try as much as possible to just relay this uh, story, right? So what they did was that they brought in a robot to build like the backbone of this ship that you can see right there, and then they put silks on it. The inset picture. I don't know if 
but as you can zoom into it yeah can you see so there is that tiny insert picture that has silk worms so what they did you see those lines like that those were the backbones of the structure can you see and then they used silk worms to build the main image can you just help us scroll towards that side mm -hmm. yeah so this main image right was built by silk worms and i think it's funny that they found that this woman this woman's fields they are so wide wide apart that i think i just want to read it out in respect of what she can do so her field cuts across art architecture design biology material engineering and computing one human being one human being right you want to look at you really you really want to look at uh things like this instead of sitting with the argument of oh i i think i think art is greater than design i think this is this i think that is that it wastes your time the time that you could have spent creating stuff creating uh good things you spend it arguing over something that is fast changing you know and it's interesting to know that i mean when it comes to defining the words right it's you, you it's sufficient for you to be able to draw the line between art and design do you get just for certain but for people that that are working in these professions do you get for these people the the things that they do are so close and so when when you start trying to put up a dividing line it will just end in unending feuds or ending on ending fights of this is greater this is this this is what we need now this is this this is that and all of that do you get and and i think why why you don't want to uh, to start doing that is because the lines are getting blurred up design is incorporating a lot of art more and more do you get and fields are getting to merge and meld into each other do you understand such that yeah so there is the, the fact is that when it comes to art i know we like to say that art is uh, artistic and all but then there is the science of it the same way design to has the science in it do you get now the fact is that as the lines are blurring up and we are having stuff like biology being merged into art you're having material uh material engineering and computing merged into art you're having a lot of fields coming together it's it's just best to just yeah have an understanding of art in order to create solutions as a designer and if you are an artist or you you are more attuned to the artistic side you should have an understanding of these principles so the idea is that be deep in everything that you're trying to do and be very very aware of the nuances of your field right but then you will find out that you don't have to draw out a deep pit between art and design you find out that what you need to do is to just allow the flow do you, do you get so yeah uh let's let's get to the next slide so yeah i'd like to know if you have questions oh yeah so uh adede is already saying uh stuff like um we also have to look at the fact that neri is probably mm -hmm. based in a country that allows such flexibility oh yeah yeah, yeah. true and then yeah I, i'm just not necessarily saying oh we should pick up different fields i'm just saying that look at the possibilities look at the future look at 
what what is about to be happening. I know that it might be tough to start thinking of stuff like that in Nigeria, but I I know it's happening, even in little ways. At least I'm sure I'm sure about the the fact that art and architecture is working hand hand in hand. You know, I'm sure I'm sure about a lot of stuff. Art and medicine working hand in hand also. So it, it's what it is. Yes, it's. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's beautiful to know that yeah, there, there is there are the things that are possible within your own country, but yeah, there are the boundaries that you can really break too. Yes, you can study one course now and go for another one. Nothing is stopping you. You can do that. I, I don't think it's it's just really just it's just really about the country that she's in. I'm not saying that I'm going back to study biology. I'm just saying that it's possible for you to pick in different fields and uh, or have different people from different fields on your team you get uh okay yeah so i would like to know if you guys have any question it seems like people were just having fun and just typing okay so guys right. we can all begin to drop our questions in the comment section I mean, let's um pick them and then to them one after the other Oh, okay, yeah. Temi Lolua says he's a designer. Is it he or she? Yeah. That that masterpiece that you're looking right there was made by my husband. Maybe it's family search and artistic family. <laughs> yep. Okay, so let's feel free to share our questions. Uh, okay. How can you start from? Okay. Uh, That's from. <laughs> to start, start from. You you use bowl to tap. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let me take Kayode's question. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah, he said, "Is there a limit to the application of free of the freedom of art in digital design?" Okay. Well, okay. Should, do you think I should answer that first, or yeah, we can answer that while we um, get other questions. Yeah. So basically, right, the limit to the application of the freedom of art to your digital design is just based on your target audience. The limit is what what can they understand, what can they flow with. So you will not expect yourself to you will not expect to go to uh what do you call it now to go to a locality that does not understand a particular language i, I even think that is like that's not going to happen you go to a uh like a house community and then mm -hmm. you start typing in english alone and you expect them to be able to read you no know? do you understand when it comes to uh what do you call it now? The application. The limit is the goal. The goal is the only limit. So if the goal is to communicate, whatever, it's like, it's just like, uh, what do you call it now? Where there is a will, there is a way, this thing that people say. You are trying to do a particular thing. You are trying to achieve a goal. There are the things that will, that will help you achieve the goals. They are the things that the people that you are relating with will understand. They are the things that they won't. So the limit is just really the goal. The limit is the goal. Thank you for that. So the limit is the goal, right? Um, we could always have our goals at the back of um, our minds. Just like uh, they say the user is too, right? Right. Yeah, the user is always always freaking right interesting so our second question you have from god's power a heals a i hope i pronounced that okay. correctly yeah it says is it possible to go deep into both branding and ux design or is the long run or in the long run someone would have to settle for one okay okay so what i would say is this yes it is possible however I would I would advise you to to go into one first and understand the nuances well 
and branch off into the other. So say you're starting from branding, you branch off to UX design. Because eventually you find out that, well, most of the times, most of the times, the, it always seems, I think, it always seems like the most valuable people are the people that can uh, do or can uh, um, can merge different fields together or different things together. Branding is quite different from user experience. Yes, there is a lot of user experience that must be known or understood while you are branding, but there are different fields inside the same field. So I think that you should focus on one. That is my own advice. However, there are some people that are able to take it. I will tell you that branding is so deep, really deep, that you still keep learning after after the many years that, that you that you spent branding and creating brands. So most of the times this is what I this is what I look at in terms of depth. I look at people like Polasha spent over twenty years of their lives designing or creating stuff for brands. You can tell that they've, they've gone deep. They've explored the nuances, the difference from the one that requires typography to the one that says this is the particular thing that we need or whatever. They've worked with the craziest of people and all. If they want to pivot, you're like, M Mommy, just stay here, ma. But then if you think you want to do that, I think it's not a big deal. I think you, you should go for it. There is no limit to what you can do, and this is not the place that this is not the person that will tell you to not do anything. This is the person that will tell you to do whatever you want to do, because it's not even about age. It's about nothing. It's just about what you want to do. If you think that is your journey, just go for it, man. Basically, but about um, so the last thing that you said was that, or in the long run, can someone settle into one? Eventually, there's no template for anything. That's what I'm getting to find out about a lot of things, right? When you when you start from the mindset of, am I going to settle into one? You have already created a box for yourself, and you may not be able to walk out of it for a long time if you spend too much time in that box. So this is what I mean. Uh, if you if you prepare your mind about settling into one, or maybe not, I don't even know. I, just open yourself up to to the possibility. Open yourself up to what can come out of it. You'll be shocked that when you're when you're deep into branding or however you want to go about it, you'll be shocked that you probably want to pivot into something else. It might shock you, but just allow yourself to flow and allow yourself to fall in love with what you're doing. You'll find out that sometimes as you're going, you just you cut the bug for something. And you just want to keep doing it for a long while. So don't don't put your mind on, oh yeah, I, I think I have to do one. But then for some people, it works like that. They have to focus on one thing in their life. If they don't focus, they will just they will blow in terms of like blow up. They won't be able to handle it. So of course it means that a good understanding of yourself, a good understanding of what your capacity is, and not something that is enforced on you. Just your own personal knowledge about yourself, what you can handle, is very important in making those decisions. But I would not advise you to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to settle into one. I would advise you to stay open, at least for now. Because if you're asking a question like, okay, you want to, is it possible to go deep? It means that you probably think you have not gotten deep enough. Do you get yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's that. More like, more like um, you really say meditation. Open your mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, th thanks for that, Mary. Um, I, I think I agree with Mary. You know, at the beginning of your career, uh, you know, um, allow yourself to explore, allow yourself to see and look at all of the possibilities that your mind could actually um, take and that you could um, do, you know. Um, because when you're interested in something, it is easier for you to um, make experience in that area, you understand? So explore yeah. at this, this stage, you know, and um, yeah. with time, when it's time to um, specialize, and um, when it's time to choose one, um, 
you will know that time. And um, who says you can't even specialize in both? <laughs> who says? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with Mary on that time. Yeah. yeah. I remember so, um, a while ago, I, I always felt like, you know, you have to focus on one, you have to blah, blah, and everything. And then I started to see, I, I, I think I saw one a very long time ago, actually. A long time ago, I saw Adora's post, Adora Mbelu. And I saw a post where she said, stuff like multi-potentialite. I'm like, it was too late. So uh, sometimes, because of what society has said, but today is not the day for stuff like this, you know. <laughs> sometimes we feel like this is, this is the box. This is the way it should look. In fact, some people actually um, have conversations based on, based on that. But you quickly find out that you're settled in it. If you are, then get to get to flow from yourself. That's that's the most beautiful place that you want to be living from, really. That's the most beautiful place you want to be living from. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, so before I go to the next question, okay, someone asked. Um, I guess we're supposed to give um, answers on a uh, movie that will really help influence um, um, the further link that um, inspiration on arts. And so what do you okay so since most of you guys are on netflix boya carlo abstract the art of design abstract the art of design oh okay yeah uh, so the in the second season that's where you find mary's work and you'll be blown away actually you'll be blown away so I, I also for art, there is this uh, Sulaski. I'm coming. Let me let me get the real spelling. Sulaski struggle. Let me type it out. Uh, struggle, struggle. The the art, the life and lost art of Sulaski. Interesting. I have seen um, abstracts, and I must say, as well, it's a great series. A great series. Everyone yeah. is watching. They're really interested. Zuk Zukowski. Okay, so uh, our next question. Abstract. Uh, okay, we're talking about. Sorry. Okay. For now, I I think I'll probably come back to this. I think I should come back to this. Let Let's get to the questions again. Okay. So you've said that art has rules. But I've heard a lot of pro designers say that break, break rules or just think outside the box. Is there any particular situation to follow to follow rules or break rules? Oh, so this is talking about when to um, break rules and uh, when to follow the rules. So what are your thoughts, Mary? Okay, sorry. Uh, let me see you. I want to see the question again. I'm I'm trying to look for it. Oh, okay. It's by why do I, I why do I hear that there will be some questions that you're not uh, okay, yeah, you said has, has rules, but I've heard a lot of pro designers have said said that break rules Thank or just think of it. Is there any yeah. particular situation to follow rules or break? Yeah. So what I would say is that there is it, uh, when, when it comes to creating great design, it's really a dance between the rules and breaking the rules. It's, it's a dance. And uh, there are some projects that would require you to break rules. So let me, let me use this illustration. I've seen, a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of, what do you call it, organizations say stuff like, we are uh we break the rules we we are very creative we are this we are that and when you get to really sit down with them because uh, because i found out again that you have to sit down with these guys and really watch what they said they are because sometimes they might be talking about what they wish they are it's just the same way people front right People can front and let you feel like this is what they are. It's the same way with design. 
So people can tell you that they like to break rules, and you find out that it's a lie, a lie. So you have to. Uh, so the idea is this: for the people that are really breaking rules, those are the guys that you should be breaking rules for. And the rules. So uh, the best way that I've, uh, that I've always found to explain break, breaking rules is like this: if you want to break the rules for uh, for gravity, for instance. Like when people started to create the airplane, right? You find out that they had to understand what makes things go up and come down again. So you can never be successful trying to break rules without understanding the rules. The truth is that when you want to break any rule, I remember reading in a particular. Uh, book making and breaking the grid. Was it making and breaking the grid? Or a book about art and and design or something. But I remember clearly that it said that when you actually break rules, it is it is in respect to the rules to the rules that that are already existing. So this is what I mean. You are breaking a particular rule, but you are aware of what you are doing. It is not breaking rule if you don't know what you are doing, sir. It's not breaking rules. If you don't know what, okay, for instance, MTN is designing something for wherever, and uh, let's say another country where, where uh, yellow means something terrible. At that point is when MTN does not want to use their yellow. They will probably knock out everything yellow. They will probably change their color for those guys alone. Yes, I've seen several projects where where they will go to another country and then they will change the way they, they look, their look and feel, sort of change. It's sort of breaking rules, but they are breaking the rules in respect to the other rules that are that are on ground. So the yeah. idea is this: you just really, I want to break rules on this. It's, there are some particular, uh, what do you call it now? There are some things that you used to check breaking the rules. And when you even break rules, it's not out of not being aware of the rules. Yeah. Thinking outside is an awareness that there are actually boxes. Yeah. Breaking the rules is an awareness that there are actually rules. You can't break rules without respect for those rules. And when you are breaking the rules, there is a reason and there's the, uh, there's the goal. Again, the goal is what we must have the uh, deepest respect, deepest, deepest and utmost respect for. So if the goal requires for you to break the rule, please do. But it's not just breaking the rule out of the Yeah, you don't break out of ignorance. Mm. And, and I no. think it's easy for you to break the rule when you're you working with um, brands. If you're working, not when you're working, but if you're working with some brands and it almost feels like eh, they're not reaching billions of people <laughs> you don't you don't try that thing when you're working with brands that are that deal in billions of dollars no in fact there will be checks and balances for you too there's no way do you understand so you are not breaking rules just for the, the thought of breaking rules unless it's not for how do I say it now? You, uh, unless the goal is not your client's probably money that is at stake, it's not. It's not that people would say something terrible about you. Or people will feel terrible about something that you did. Uh -huh. If you, are, if it's just personal expression, it's fine. Break the rules, but you should be aware of the rules. Yeah, thank yep. you. Thank you. It's, it's a lot easier to break rules when you understand. Um, what it is being used for. Uh, just like um, um, when they say, you know, you will also no, use no. your application. You also, you understand the rules, but you um, find ways to apply those rules and know those that matter and those that do not matter. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So um 
We have another question from Fraser Deshino. He says, do you think there is more to design featuring other professions in our culture, like wood making? And does it, or will it take a different approach to working with other people in that profession, especially if you've been used to a certain system of process as a designer? Okay, so Trace is talking about um, working with people in other areas of design um, outside of graphic and um, maybe web and all, you know. Um, I guess mm. it's like you're into whether fashion, um, um, wood making, carpentry, you know, and the lights. Fact, I could even say yeah. uh, the mobile and all of that as well. Okay, so he says mm. if you get used to a certain system of process, okay, so let me mm -hmm. see. Okay, and does it or will it take a different approach to work with them? Okay. Okay. So actually, when it comes to uh, working or featuring other designers, or sorry, other professions in what yeah. you're creating, the yeah. major rule is just the rule of life, really, this empathy. So, <laughs> you, it, it, the only approach that it takes, this, or the first and major approach, is empathy. Actually, you don't understand, you don't know what you don't know, to an extent. No matter how you, let's say you, you pick someone that is into uh, carpentry, or automobile design yeah. and you are just let me not say just but you are a graphic designer where your work has to involve some very technical um some other technical professions the truth is that no matter i think that you should know at least something about those fields you should know some things but it's not that you should now sit down for three months and be taking courses in carpentry because you want to understand them. I think what you want to really, really focus on is understanding how people work. So I remember I, uh, I have a couple of things that I have not finished. I have a couple of books. So I, I started reading a book a, a while ago. That's that okay. bad. But I started reading a book, and the book is called Make It Bigger. I think I have just a few pages left. Make It Bigger by Paula Shah. And Part of the things that she said at the beginning was she found out that design is quite political. And that's the way life is. Life is quite political. I, I, bet, I bet you would agree with me. Yes, you are probably a believer or not. When, uh, you, you would always say stuff like, when I get into, if I get into power, there are some things I'm going to do. You'll find out that there are a lot of things that you probably, that you've sworn that you would never do. Well, because of the political nature of stuff, you will do some things. I'm not saying that you should do terrible things in life. I'm just saying that you should get to understand the fact that some people, some people understand their field so deeply that it's even difficult for them to work with other people from other fields in the first place. So yeah. it, it, you, you need to have a deep sense of humili uh, humility to know that you don't even know what you don't know. 